Let's actually knit a start to finish open cable project together. We're working on this pair of books. Pretzel Logic is the one on the right. They are sold as a set and there is a link in the program notes. It will help you quite a lot with this project if you've also seen videos one through five because the mechanics of doing the knitting, understanding the charts, seeing how we're using the machine to create the fabric, those things are all covered thoroughly in the first few videos and we'll focus on just knitting the project in this one with a little review to help you. This pattern uses just one to two ounces of number one yarn set up so that 44 needles are working on each bed. Rack them so that they alternate when all come out at a very small stitch size, usually zero, one, or two, depending on your specific machine. Knit across so that the yarn forms a zigzag between the two beds. Push the river comb without the wire in it up through the zigzag, reinsert the wire, and hang weights on the river comb. We're making a tubular cast on that'll go straight into a tubular hem. And for the next two rows, I usually raise the stitch size a bit. And of course, set both beds for tubular knitting settings. Now set both beds to main stitch size minus one whole number. At this stitch size, knit 12 more rows with the carriage still set for tubular. In order to avoid a bump at the edges of the tubular rows, we normally now rack so that the needles oppose perfectly. But it's optional for this project because the edge stitches will be hidden in the seam. Now transfer all stitches to the front, otherwise known as the river bed. Passive knitters are just accustomed to calling it a front bed. Most Japanese knitters are accustomed to calling it the river. In this case, Whatever you call it, it will do the job of knitting the background fabric for the dress. We're going to knit on the front bed, river bed only, for just a minute. So that one needs to be set to knit stockinette. You may either set the back bed to knit stockinette now, or to slip every row just for a minute while we work on the front bed only. Turn up both dials now to the main stitch size. Having transferred all the stitches to the front bed closes the hem. Now we'll knit across from left to right on the front bed only, establishing the reverse stockinette background. I don't normally drop the beds for this next step, but I'm doing it so that you can better see what's going on. And what that is, is I'm lifting the purl bump from the two center stitches on the front bed and hanging those strands of yarn on the two center needles on the back bed. Beds are racked so that the needles alternate. Now we will proceed with the front bed knitting plain knitting and only two stitches in work at all times on the back bed and we'll work the chart. Here's a quick review of the chart notations. These are the two knit stitches we just placed into work on the back or main bed. We knit two rows, then we cable them. That's what is signified by the yellow in the boxes. Those stitches are to be cabled. In this case, it does not matter whether you go left over right or right over left. Just be consistent throughout the project. Knit two rows, then move those two stitches apart one needle space from one another. That's what's meant by the little arrows in the boxes. Knit two rows, then move those stitches back so that they're side by side. You'll see the arrows are pointing the opposite way from the previous set. Let's work rows one through six. Knit two rows, make the cable. Then we'll knit two more rows, move the stitches apart. Knit two rows, move the stitches back together. Knit two rows, and we're starting to repeat the pattern, make the cable. And we do the whole one through six routine four times in total. Here's a little bit of visual help with that. This is repeating one through six four times. Just for a little bit of variety, we change on rows seven through 11 and cable twice in a row. Here it is on the chart. We'll knit two rows, cable, knit two rows, cable again. 
then knit two rows and move the stitches apart. Here we go in real life. Knit two rows, cable cross, knit two rows, cable cross, knit two plain rows. Now we'll work rows five through eight one more time to create another little diamond just like the ones at the beginning near the hem. After the cable cross on row eight, we now begin moving the stitches apart, only this time we just keep on moving the stitches farther apart. I'm really sorry that it blurred there. I don't know what exactly happened, but all I was doing is continually moving the two stitches farther from one another, as I still am. These will create an interesting effect at the neckline. Rows 12 through 18 on the chart show the stitches moving three additional times to create this effect. We are now finished with using cable stitches so we'll transfer them back to the front or riverbed. Knit two rows and then make eyelets all the way across the work. Do so by transferring every other stitch to the neighboring needle and leave the empty needles in work. I'm actually showing you doing every fourth stitch. I later came to realize that the top of the dress was much more attractive and redid it using every other stitch. So that's what you should do make eyelets on every other needle. Knit two final rows and then we're ready to bind off. I don't love binding off on the front bed. It's very hard on my shoulders. So I'm scrapping off and I will bind off with the work off of the machine. You may do this any way you want as long as the bind off looks tidy. What I chose to do is leave a long main yarn tail and I'm working chain stitches through it with the latch tool. Then, of course, remove the waste yarn. The tubular hem is always going to look its best after it's had a lengthwise pull. So here I'm using a prong tool and just inserting one of the prongs to pull it lengthwise. And, and here's what we've knitted. Here is a sketch of the knitted piece. Sew the edges of the work together from about waist height all the way down through the hem. Use a slender ribbon or a thicker piece of yarn or do what I did and crochet a chain out of contrasting yarn and work it in and out of the eyelets. Your drawstring needs to be long enough to reach all the way around Barbie's upper chest area and then tie it into a bow to close the garment. Also sew a couple of snaps or a piece of Velcro to the underside of one layer and the top side of the other layer from the waist to near the top of the fabric. This is a closure for the dress and also shapes the torso to be a little bit narrower than it was since we just knitted a rectangle. And that's it. Barbie's ready to go. The American Girl doll dress, which is also presented in toddler girl sizes, is made in a similar manner. It's a little bit more complicated, but not very much so, so you won't have any trouble knitting it after you've knitted the Barbie dress. In the next video, we'll experiment with creating cables designing as we go. No charts at all.